Welcome to this, your real illuminating moment, M.O.W. Prince. Regarding the translated Bible and its many versions, we cannot assume that the translators of the Bible understood and knew what the original language and scriptures recorded in the authentic prophet's hand meant in order to transliterate them into their Bible, into their language, which had no words or punctuation similar to that of the original text. Since the translators worked for the Roman church government, and were never born again, nor authorized by Yahweh, it would be unwise to trust in anything that was interpreted for us by them. It would be unwise to trust their interpretation of the Holy Scriptures. These sexually wicked pedophiles and demons in the army of Satan cannot know God in order to translate his scriptures for us. It would be unwise to trust any false apostle, better known as an emperor pope, who changed God's Sabbath days and laws into their pagan festivals and pagan doctrines. Daniel 7.25 Please hear what the scriptures are saying based on what God has already done. And since God doesn't change, neither does his law, commandments, and Sabbath days. All of his ways are perfect, holy, and just from the beginning and has not even a shadow of change or compromise in them. Not enough knowledge is a dangerous thing, but willful ignorance and blind trust in a sadistic, murdering, pagan, cross-worshipping, rain-kissing, idolatrous, feminized, man-engineered religion is suicidal and an offense against heaven and against the blood of the anointed one from Father Yahweh, Yehoshua Hamashiach. The scriptures attest to the truth that no prophecy of scripture comes by interpretation. Let me repeat that one more again. The scriptures attest to the truth that no prophecy of scripture comes by interpretation. But men from Father Yahweh spoke to us as they were compelled to do by the Holy Spirit of Yahweh, Ezekiel 33 and 2 Peter 1.21. If we are going to study the scriptures, then we should study all of them in their entirety, in the context, syntax, and nuance of the authentic language in which they were originally written and communicated. Stop taking the devil's word for what God said and means. He is a liar, and all of his churches and false prophets and prophetesses are liars too. It is who they are. It is their nature to lie. John 8, 44, 1 John 1 and 10. Beware of teaching what a Bible teaches, because to do so means that you have placed the Bible as an idol and its translated words as having authority over God. Teaching what a Bible teaches was never practiced by God. Let me repeat that. Teaching what a Bible teaches was never practiced by God. It was never practiced by Jesus, nor any of the apostles or disciples. As the scriptures have told us, Men chosen by God spoke from God as they were carried along by the Holy Spirit. There is just no getting around this undeniable fact and practice of God. And remember that God does not change. And in these last days, he has spoken to us by his son, whom he appointed heir of all things, and through whom also he made the universe. Hebrews 1 and 2, John 1, 1 through 3. God the Father has never told any of his children to depend upon a translated, interpreted version of a collection of random texts from a humanly constructed, engineered, edited, and censored book created by the cruel world-conquering nation-state who carried out the execution of Jesus. But none is as blind as those who refuse to see, nor so doomed as those who follow blind guides, false prophets, and dead souls. We just can't make a woman or a man hear the truth to repent of the lie if they have decided that the lie is their truth. They have shut their ears and their hearts to God 
and the laws of God, and they cannot come into any saving knowledge of God. They do not have faith. Faith comes by hearing, by listening to God's holy word out of the mouth of his chosen prophets. Not out of a book, not out of a Bible, but out of the mouth of God. They cannot know God and will not inherit eternal life. Romans 1, 1 John 2 and 4, 2 Timothy 3, 6 through 7. Now, not seeing this doesn't make it untrue. And seeing it doesn't make it true. It's true regardless of whether I say it or whether you ignore it. The truth never changes. God never called a book holy. Let me repeat that. God never called the Bible holy. Man did. God forbids that any symbol, idolatrous artifact, inanimate object or created thing of man be associated with his name or with his sovereignty or with his throne. And he never endorsed the Bible nor a Christian religion as belonging to him nor his kingdom. Thus, he does not speak to us through those idolatrous images, crosses, books, pulpits, churches, theologies, popes, institutions, and false prophets and lying, whoring spirits. Remember that God always speaks through his anointed prophets by the power of the Holy Spirit. And God never changes. So why would he change now? Shouldn't any change sound an alarm in our hearts and in our souls? Wouldn't you be weary and suspicious if something changed about someone who doesn't change? Come on, people. Wake up and admit that we all have been deceived by religions in general and by Christianity in particular. And many of us have made lucrative and prosperous careers in the commercialization and practice of religious deception. Christianity is a billion dollar business and the lure, enticement, excitement and seduction of religious glamour, glitter, gold and popularity is addictive as well as all of Satan's tactics of deception and misdirection, lies and perversions. Wake up! Do you really believe that an almighty God needs your currency, your money? Wake up. Do you really think God is trying to build his kingdom here on earth with your money, through your church, through your pastor? Where is his groundbreaking being held? Stop being silly. Do you really feel that God is in a church that endorsed murder, enslavement, and torture of others? Do you really think that God's church would harbor homosexuals, child molesters, rapists, pedophiles, and murderers as the Christian church does? Do you really think that God would entrust his institutions of family and marriage to a Christian church or to any man, woman, boy, or girl, agency, civil, or national authority? Do you really think that a religion and their religious translations and many versions is so holy as to rule over God, certify whom he has put together as husband and wife, credential and ordain who he has chosen and anointed as his prophets and messengers, and tell him what he should change in his laws and commandments, what he should tolerate and accept as holy? Really, people? Who has directed the spirit of the Lord or informed him as his counselor? Who did he consult to enlighten him? And who taught him the path of justice? Who imparted knowledge to him and showed him the way of understanding? Shall any man or woman teach God knowledge? Who dares call God a homophobe, a chauvinist, or unjust? Anyone who dares say that they speak for God as one who knows God and does not keep his laws is a liar. First John 2 and 4. And since the truth does not abide in that lying soul, neither does God nor his Holy Spirit, nor the living word from the Father. For the Spirit is no lie. And God never calls his Holy Spirit to reside in a book or its translations or many versions. Are you crazy? All true knowledge and wisdom come from God through his Holy Spirit of revelation. Let me say that one more time. All true knowledge and wisdom comes from God and not through a book. For the Lord gives wisdom. From his mouth comes knowledge and understanding. Let me repeat that. From his mouth, not from the pages of a book, from his mouth comes knowledge and understanding. Proverbs 2 and 4. Referring to the mouth of his prophets comes knowledge 
and understanding. Not from a Bible or Bible reading, but through his prophets. Faith comes by hearing God's word, and God always sends his anointed word by his prophets. Not through a book, through his prophets. The scriptures point to this fact in John 5, 39. And the scriptures record that we should ask God for wisdom, and he gives generously to all without finding fault, and it will be given to them. James 1. Scriptures provide information, but the Holy Spirit provides revelation. Without the Holy Spirit and God's permission and provision, we can't know or understand anything of what the scriptures really mean. Thus, a book or Bible is only a source material. It is neither holy or trustworthy in itself. We need the Holy Spirit, the Holy Rahakodesh, the Spirit of Yahweh, the Spirit of God's holiness. It is better to teach and preach out of the Holy Spirit of God than out of a book. Let me say that again. It is better to teach out of the Holy Spirit of Yahweh than out of a Bible. We must seek first the genuine gift of the Holy Spirit and not a counterfeit, sentimental, emotional, filled, animated, religious spirit of church. We must diligently and sometimes sacrificially seek and pray for the Holy Spirit. We have to be serious about our salvation and not casual. We can't delegate our salvation to a church, pope, pastor, or Sunday theology. The instructions are to work out our own salvation with reverent fear and with awesome trembling before the almighty sovereign Yahweh. For without him, we are lost. Without him, we can't know or do anything. Without his anointing and grace, we are powerless and ignorant. We must be born again, born of the baptism into water in his name and of the spirit of God by his accepting of our repentance through his gifting of the Holy Spirit. We must be born from above to understand the kingdom of God. We must be born from above to even understand the language of his scripture. For no one may see, comprehend, understand, cognitively grasp hold of, or to perceive anything about God or the kingdom of God until they are born again. John 3. We must be born from above. All knowledge about God and his living word comes from heaven and not from any other source, especially not from any human source. When Jesus asked Peter, who do you say that I am? Peter answered, you are the anointed one from Father Yahweh, the son of the living God. And Yehoshua replied, Blessed are you, Simon, son of Jonah, for this was not revealed to you by flesh and blood, but by my Father in heaven. This was not revealed to you through any human agency, through any book learning, through any scriptures, but by my Father in heaven. Yehoshua didn't give anything credit for revealing the truth to Simon, son of Jonah, but his father. All knowledge, understanding, and wisdom comes from the father. In other words, theology, the teaching out of the Torah and other written scriptures, nor the temple service, nor the priesthood revealed this to Peter. But the truth was given to him by his father in heaven. Truth and all knowledge comes from God. Therefore, I say unto us all, look to God for wisdom and understanding. Look to the Holy Spirit for revelation into the words that are written in Scripture. Look to God for our salvation and repent. I'm O.W. Prince, and this has been our real illuminating moment. And as always in parting, many are the afflictions of the righteous, but the Lord delivers us out of them all. Life indeed hurts, but God heals. Thank you, God. To God be the glory. Keep looking up.